Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to the centre of Moscow. I am literally in the centre of Moscow and I thought I'd take you for a walk around one of my favourite parks in Moscow that's right here also in the centre of Moscow and it's kind of behind me so let's go on over there shall we? Now my original plan for this video was actually to do a top five things to see around Red Square and right in front of me here is St. Basil's Cathedral which is pretty much one of the most recognized landmarks in Russia uh, no matter where you're from in the world you probably know this location it's right here by Red Square and the Kremlin and today the Kremlin and Red Square is actually fenced off so I'm not able to go for a walk in there it happens quite often in Moscow you can come any day of the week and for whatever reason they like they just fence it off and no access is granted to anybody so it's kind of empty today it's actually nice to take photos of the uh, church right in front of me here without you know crowds of people around so that's kind of handy now where we want to go is literally over the road here and this is Zaradi Park it's actually the first park in Moscow in the last 50 years or the the newest park in Moscow in the last 50 years now that's quite a feat when you think about it in your head I mean surely they're building parks everywhere right but for Moscow you know there's not a lot of space to build new parks so Zarati Park is kind of historical in a way so let's get across the road and check it out and literally we just have to cross the main road here it's actually fairly straightforward this is the Bolshoi Moskovsky bridge uh, basically very big bridge and it sort of crosses over from where we are in the center of Moscow to go out into the suburbs a little way today's actually a non-working day in Moscow so there's not really that much traffic around it's not very busy at all around the center here probably because Red Square is closed and you know the uh, kind of tourist traffic is kind of kind of spreading out a little bit more so we'll wait for the zebra crossing to let us cross here is that what you guys call it a zebra crossing pretty sure it's known all around the world by that but if it's not let me know in the comments okay so we finally got across the street even with no traffic the uh, crossing there takes forever to change from uh, red to green but no worries at all there's actually a few more people in the park than usual this is one of my favorite parks to come to in Moscow obviously it's right in the center so it's nice and easy to just come for a walk here it's very picturesque lots of things to see and take photos of you know you can come back over and over again and kind of feel like you haven't seen anything so Zarati Park is very well known for all the different fauna and flora that you can see in the park the actual park itself is separated into six different zones with different uh, types of trees and plants to signify different regions of Russia that they've tried to replicate here in the park in the center of Moscow there's a little tourist uh, booth here where you can go in and find out information about where to see where to go and where what to see in Moscow I've actually never been in there but no worries we will kind of cut in and out a little bit there's lots of park benches here these very big I'm going to always call them railway sleepers that they've used for benches and they are literally everywhere in this park so there's no problems finding somewhere to relax if you're a little bit tired so there is a couple of very cool features of this park which we'll get to in a little bit one of them is a bridge kind of hanging over the river or suspended over the river so we're going to go on that as well now this particular park itself opened back in 2017 by the president and of Russia and the mayor and at the time it was reported that the park cost 500 million dollars to build so there was a lot of people who were happy there's a beautiful park here but maybe not happy that it was half a billion US dollars I don't even know what that is in rubles it's a lot of money 
I mean, walking around, you can see where the money is spent. It's a beautiful place, but half a billion dollars. And we're probably a few weeks early for all of the flowers to be in bloom. Uh, all the plants that were planted back a few months ago are starting to come out now and starting to look really nice. The uh, park itself, when you look at it from a distance, can look a little bit kind of rugged. And that's really the point of this park, to show different tundras of Russia. So where you see all the grasses here and all the plants, it's meant to look this way. I mean, you've got to remember, we're in the absolute center of Moscow as well. Now, this may not be too exciting for most people, but this is actually an uh, undercover car park. There's actually a 500 space car park built underneath the entire park here. And the exit comes out to the main road, but this is actually the entrance and exit that you come walking up from the lower level. Now, there's nobody using it today because it's very warm, but this is actually a robot bartender, but it actually makes coffee. So it's a robotic coffee barista. I think that's the right word. It was actually, it's been here a lot of years. I think this has been here since the place was built. And quite often there's a bit of a crowd around it, depending on the time of year that you come. And then there's another visitor center here on the left-hand side, kind of built into the side of the park itself. It's very hilly, this little area where I'm walking. So they've tucked all the buildings underground so that you can kind of get as much landscaping on top as possible and a lot of trees and plants and that they can uh, fit the better. I mean, especially for an inner city park like this. Walking around, the one thing you do here is lots of birds tweeting away. Maybe it's not so evident on the microphone, but these trees are well established now in the last six years or so since it's been here. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Now there is two viewpoints of the river that you can walk on in Zarati Park. So this is one of them when you kind of first come in and you can see the Moscow River right ahead of us, some of the ferries going up and down the river and where we want to go, and I'll actually end up on the lower level as well, is this uh, suspended bridge here which goes 70 meters out from the initial point to the very tip. 70 meters extended over the river. And there's actually a restaurant underneath as well. And this restaurant's kind of interesting. It's kind of a food court style place, but they've got one of the cafes in there where every item, no matter what you choose, is only 300 rubles. So the entire menu is one price. And that's quite reasonable for Moscow in terms of being right here in Red Square area. And we can also see one of the Seven Sisters buildings in the distance there. And then dotted all around the park are these little wooden blocks here with the different types of plants. And what's interesting, they've got them in Russian and in English. So there's four different plants that you can kind of identify in this part right here now. It does look a little bit overgrown from when they probably installed it. You can see the different grasses and flowers there. So as we wake our way out to the edge of the viewpoint here, we can see now, I think almost half of the park is just here at this viewpoint. It's very famous uh, in Zarati Park. You've got to come here to this viewpoint. And uh, if you really want to come for a photograph to be alone in the picture, maybe come early morning or late evening because it's, it's normally very crowded. And today, we've kind of got the sun behind us. So the photos looking back at the Kremlin are not the best today because the sun's right there. But if we look towards one of the Seven Sisters uh, buildings here, you can see how nice that kind of blue uh, sky kind of contrasts with the stonework of the building. Now, I've been here a few times. Actually, I've been here a lot of times. Sometimes you can barely get a spot by the edge of the glass here to get a photograph. So there is a few people here today. It's you know, for a public holiday, where is everybody? Maybe everybody's at their dacha, they're having an extended weekend, and they'll be back to work tomorrow. 
essentially today has been deemed a non-working day in Russia so a lot of the particularly the government business uh, buildings and businesses won't be open but most of the normal places of the public are definitely open uh, coming into Moscow today <laughs> there wasn't anything I saw closed so I'm always curious who has these non-working days so standing right here we are literally on the middle point of this lookout here so we're literally directly over the river now you can see people stopping for a photograph it's perfect photo opportunity spot here again we can see all the boats going up and down the river and then looking back on the red square the kremlin st basil's cathedral and then the rest of zarati park here and there's a very nice uh, park within a park in the lower area which we'll go for a little bit of a walk around it's a big place to cover in one video but i'll do my best i really find it interesting this contrasting view over the river here because on one side over here on the right you see the the building with the chimneys this is probably a heat exchange or some kind of a, a building for thermal heating for the buildings nearby and then over here you see the beautiful historical buildings of Moscow and obviously you can't get away from the main roads around the center of Moscow it's actually a lot less traffic than usual because of this non-working day so that's actually also nice sometimes when you walk along this bridge that I'm on now both directions it's bumper to bumper traffic but it's much uh, quieter lots of people kind of at their midway walk around the park and relaxing on the benches and right in front of us here is a huge concert hall where they have different events throughout the year where they uh, have dance performances uh, singers opera singers um, orchestras all sorts and have a look down the bottom here this kind of small church and waterway I really hope you find this video interesting I really like coming to this park I've been here so many times and just never made a video I just come for a walk around here when I come into the center of Moscow usually it's nearby something else that I'm visiting so I hope you find it interesting as much as I do now I'm probably the last person that would get invited up on stage here unless it's maybe calling bingo or something like that but this is the outdoor amphitheater here in front of me so obviously you'd sit in all these terrace seats right here lots of people up the top there just relaxing under the shade and then the stage is right here and depending on when you come here there's a lot of free concerts that get held here and I was literally here only last week and part of the Moscow Jazz Festival was going on and if you come later in the evening when the sun sets you get that beautiful view looking back at the Kremlin and St Basil's Cathedral from when you sit up in the stands and it's actually a huge structure that they built over it there so you can be in those top kind of seats there in the shade or out of the rain if it happens to be raining but most people are loving the sun today I think and then walking on a little bit further they're actually building some apartments right in front of me here which they've been building them for a couple of years I think they're coming to an end slowly there may be some office space in there as well but uh, you can see the kind of steepness of the different mounds that make up Zarati Park so it's kind of a good workout when you come here at the same time hopefully you can see a little bit of a change in the uh, plants here as well it's a lot more open and not, not as uh, shaded with trees so this location was originally a very big hotel I think at the time it was the largest hotel in all of Russia and certainly all of Moscow called Hotel Rosia, Russia Hotel and they basically demolished it all and pulled it all down and built this open park area which you know in terms of 
uh, the right of the center of Moscow. I mean, great idea. I mean, have somewhere for the people, let everybody come for a walk, relax, and breathe some fresh air rather than feeling like you're sort of in the middle of a major city like we are in Moscow. And throughout the park, there's different churches dotted around, and this one's on the lower level here, quite close to the river. You can see one of the boats turning around. And they've got these placards in place, which is very nice. And it tells you the information here. I'm going to be all in the wrong spot when I'm doing this. And this is called the Church of the Conception of St. Anne. And it dates back to 1493. 1493. That's 300 years older than when Australia was founded or discovered. And we're right in the middle of this bridge and that waterway that we saw as we were walking over it. It's one of the boats goes by again. A lot of boats going on the Moscow River. This is boating season. So this is the time of year where everybody takes the different uh, tourist boats, as they're called. And have a look at this pond right here. This is fantastic. And I wonder if there's any fish in there. I hope there are. Somewhere. And then you can see this 70 meter span that goes out over the river. Actually, when you're on it, I think it's a little bit more scary than standing down here looking at it. Now, no matter where you live in the world, if you've got a garden with some grass, I'm pretty sure this sprinkler is very familiar. Now, I'm pretty sure you weren't expecting me to talk about sprinklers on a park video in Moscow, but I think everybody around the world's owned one of these rotating grass sprinklers at some point. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, <laughs> I, th I think it is. And then have a look here now, we can get a good view of this. I call it the paperclip. I don't think they've ever named this just an arch or a viewpoint. And I call it the paperclip because it kind of looks like a bent paperclip in a way. <laughs> it's, that's just what I call it. And just that brutalist architecture of the concrete and metal and wood. And then you see the buildings on the other side and then this kind of green that makes up the park right here by the main road it's almost hard to believe that where i'm standing right behind me is a four lane road and then they've got this pond here and then this uh, concrete span that goes out over the river and this beautiful view of this park looking back you can see how steep it is from where we walked in originally. How nice. Now I realize that not everybody in Russia or even in Moscow loves Zarati Park. A lot of people don't like the fact that they spent half a billion dollars. The fact that it's, you know, next to a main road. Uh, there's a lot of reasons people don't like it, but, you know, I, I love it. You know, I just think it's such a cool place to come walking from Red Square, Alexander Garden, which is kind of only a five minute walk from here. And you can see so many things within a roughly about a five kilometer radius. And you can have a whole day out in Moscow and you've barely walked anywhere. So this is part of the reason I think it's one of the nicest parks in Moscow as well. There's this really nice wooden bridge here that you can walk over as well with the small pond running underneath it. I really am curious if this, oh there is fish. I was gonna say, are there fish in here? They're kind of like big goldfish or uh, what are they called? The giant goldfish that they have in these ponds. I was gonna say carp, but I think there's another word for them. Let me know what they call these giant fish that are in here. You can see all the staff here doing the gardening in this section. It really must take like a big group of staff to look after this, to uh, constantly uh, change the seasons as well. So coming out of winter, uh, spring, summer, autumn. 
This map of the park gives you an idea of the different zones that they've made it into here. There's meadow, there's birch forest, and then down here by the road here, the coastal forest, and then the steep, the coniferous forest. So as you walk around, you can discover them. And then the different sort of plants and trees that make up this area. And there's even a kid's playground here. Actually nice and shaded too, which is good. And from here, you can get a view of the big Moscow Bridge where we started out the video and the big concrete arches that make it up spanning over the river. And they did actually say when they originally built this bridge, they tried to pick the narrowest point in the river because at the time they built it, it was going to be awfully expensive. So they didn't want to have such a big span going over the river. So they chose a, a narrow point, especially uh, the fact they wanted the ridge to be very close to the Kremlin. So at least somebody was thinking. And another pond. And then this little park. It's not very big. There's parks everywhere around Moscow and the kids' playgrounds, but it's nice for the kids to let off a bit of energy. There's probably a funny or not so funny sign here saying that this area is a no drone zone. And if anything happens, there's a big fine that you can pay. And then you can scan the QR code effectively to pay the fine. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but not funny really. But most of the center of Moscow, for as long as I've lived here, you've not been able to use drones and uh, these camera flying devices. So it's not a new thing. Really, it's been here for a lot of years. What a view from here. And then walking a little bit further around the park, they've got these nice gravel paths that you can follow. Everybody's relaxing under the trees. Here we are here. It is a warm day. It's not hot like Australia hot day, but it's deceiving here. You can have a 25 degree day and it feels like 35 because you've got a lot more humidity here than uh, in Australia where I live, where we're very coastal. So it's a lot drier and you get the nice afternoon breeze. Everybody just chilling out and enjoying the afternoon. I wonder how many people ended up with a day off. I wonder how many people just came to the park just because, just like me really. See a few birds flying around. These, it's just so va different when you watch, well, as you've been watching the video, and I've been walking around, how it changes to these different tundras of Russia and how each place where you can sit feels like you're in a completely different park. And up here, you know, it's uh, nice and shaded and it's much quieter because we're not near the roads as well. I mean, look at all the nice flowers here. They're not quite blooming and they're not too far away. And that contrast with the people up the top there having a nice look out over the park. We've almost done the full loop around. So the part I'm standing on now is called the Northern Landscape. And I think because of this kind of rocky outlook and all of the, I guess, rocks and stones and boulders that they've placed up here. It's also the best view of the park from here as well. We can see all the different places that we walked. And then we can see that visitor center on the lower left. We can see the amphitheater off in the distance. And what a view from here. Actually, I've never been up to this point before. I wonder if this has not been open in the past. I don't remember, but that's interesting. And you can see one of the corners of the Kremlin there and the red bricks that make up the wall and one of the turrets on the corner there. I think they're called turrets. I'm not exactly sure, but what a spot this is. This is kind of one of the secret lookouts of Moscow almost. Now I thought the only appropriate way to end the video 
was to come into Gum and have a look at their flowers. Now there is a flower week in Moscow. I think it's next month or so, I believe. But here in Gum, they've already set up some of the flower displays. Kind of right here in the middle uh, alley. And on the upper terraces as well, they've got some of the flowers in the flower boxes. Oops, there we go. But uh, it's a very quiet place today walking through Gum. Normally there's a few more people here. Again, because of this non-working day, I think a lot of people have extended their weekend and stayed out in their country homes or their duchas and not come back to the city. There's a very nice fountain in the middle of this shopping arcade as well. If you haven't seen some of my other videos, definitely check them out on the channel. I've walked through here quite a few times. It is a beautiful shopping center to just to walk through like I think everybody does me included and the lines on either side here for the ice cream this is famous here in Gum also there's a little bit of a line depending on which flavor you want and everybody figuring out which one they is their favorite the one thing I forever find curious with this shopping center is where all of the money comes from obviously from renting out these store spaces all around us I mean up to the third level and then three different alleys but I think most of the income of this shopping center comes from the ice cream sales and how many they would sell on a daily basis would be staggering all the flowers in these pots now in other videos that I've made in Gum they have different seasonal events uh, which correspond with the time of year but now, flower season. So as I walk out of Gum, I come now to the end of the video. I want to thank everybody for watching. I really do hope you liked this walk around of Zaradi Park. I'm actually in Nikulskaya Street now, the very famous one with the fairy lights just above me here. And ahead of me would be Red Square, but it's fenced off, so I'm gonna have to walk the kind of long way around to find my way home. I'm actually gonna go to the secret supermarket to grab some sushi to take home for dinner so if you want to check out that video it'll be right coming up uh, as a pop-up in a few seconds time thanks everybody for watching post a comment have you been to Zaradi Park before did you even know about it I'm surprised in so many comments how many people who are from Russia or from Moscow mention that they've watched some of my videos and didn't know about the places that I visit so yeah let me know in the comments do you have a park in the center of your city where you live in the world? Um, maybe you do, maybe you don't, let me know. So that other video will come up right after this. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Thumbs down if you didn't. And I'm going to see you in another video. Bye everybody.